What's up, people? It's your man, Urban Lover, coming from your mama's basement, baby. You know how we do. Hey, I'm not going to be hype about this game. Reason why? Because, number one, I want consistency. I know a lot of fans might disagree with me, but I want consistency. Like, all right, we won four games in a row. We lose two, then we win one. The thing is about it is that, you know, I've been saying this over and over again, you know, and this, this is one of the biggest problems with the Lakers organization as a whole. And I don't want to keep dragging it in the dirt, but, you know, it starts from the front office on down to the players. You know, everybody has a, a, a hand in the reason why the Lakers are a subpar type of team this year. Everybody. I mean, there's no excuse for nobody on this team at all. Nobody. Nobody is without fault. You know, from the players missing free throws to having a bunch of turnovers from the coach with uh, the rotation, the time management. From the front office, not getting the, uh, the coach shooters um, and not really building around Lou Walton, as he stated a while back, that this team needed to be built around Lou Walton. I'm going to throw my uh, link in the, in, in, my, uh, in the video. You'll see it up it's right over the top of your head. If you don't, if you see it, it should be up there. Uh, when Matt Johnson said that, you know, the team should be built around Lou Walton. And based on that, that preference alone, you'll think that if that was the case, then how come Lou Walton don't have no shooters? Now, the Lakers winning, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to kind of beat that up. I'm going to talk about this real quick. Like I said, a lot of my videos have been going over 20 minutes. Eventually, I'm going to start doing podcasts. And once my personal situation gets settled, because I would love for a lot of you guys to comment, to call in so we can have a discussion on, you know, on, on live YouTube or just on my videos altogether, however I choose to do it. And that's in future plans. But anyway, the Lakers went into uh, Brooklyn in hostile territory. You know, we got to see... Uh, Russell again didn't have a good game. Second game, Roy didn't have a good game. Plus, he wasn't even starting him or Okafor. I understand Okafor because he just got on the team. But Russell just coming back from his injury, so it makes sense. Plus, uh, Dem Winter was playing pretty good. But anyway, Julius Randle once again had another monster game. Another good game. He was 9 for 16, 12 rebounds. He did have five turnovers, 19 points. Brandon Ingram played a point this game. Thank you for not starting Tyler Enos. Uh, me and I know a whole bunch of fans along with me. Even your probably your father and probably other people probably said it. You should not even be starting that guy. That guy shouldn't even be getting off the bench. Um, I'm I'm happy they started Ingram, and the reason why because Ingram with his length and his size it makes it it makes a lot of difference. I've been saying over and over again that Ingram need to play in the backcourt. Now I know we're not going to ever get to see him play the two, but I would love for him to play the two, and I'm gonna keep saying the two. It comes to an existence because eventually Lou Wong going to have to realize, hey, I'm gonna have to do something, you know, because you got all this talent and you're just not utilizing according to their strength. Now Matt Johnson said that he wanted Ingram to be a 20 point scorer. Now me personally, I said it over and over again. Ingram is like a Derrick McKees, a lot of upside, a lot of versatility, but he's not somebody that's going to take control of a team. He's just not that type of player. He's more of an unselfish player that like to get other players involved in the offense. It's common sense. You can see it. And and that's one thing I like about Ingram. You know, and, and like I said, at the end of the day, over the course of time, he's going to get better. Now, the biggest problem I had with these guys, mostly him and Randall, is that when they go to the paint, you know, they're uncontrollable a lot of time when they go to the paint. The only difference about Randall and Ingram that se separates them apart from each other is that Ingram is much have a much smaller frame, so he's not knocking nobody over. So a lot of times those fouls gonna be called, for, you know, towards him. He's gonna get those fouls called. Whereas Julius Randall, those fouls gonna go the other way, based on the fact that he's 250, where Ingram's like 195 or something. So Julius Randall, when he come in there, he's gonna knock people down. They really need a developing, um, a developing coach when it comes to offense. You know, especially like for Euro steps and all that, they need to find somebody that can help them, you know, develop their game much further when they're going to the paint. Because a lot of defense know that these two guys are going to drive to the paint and they 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 drop down in the paint. That's not saying that the Lakers should give up on attacking the paint because that's where they're best at. They're number one in the league at attacking the basket. But they just gotta find uh they gotta develop their game much more better when it's going to the paint to go to that rim. Another thing also with Julius Randle and with Brandon Ingram. Also, and it's also on Luke Walton that when these two guys are crashing the paint or going to the paint to score or try to make a play, you should have players cutting backdoor cuts and stuff like that. So when they draw the defense to them, these guys are open up for easier layups. We got to run much more better scheme when it comes to half court uh, offense. 
we're not good at half court offense. And you can sit there and watch it. The Lakers, if you watch, when you see Brand Ingram and, and Julius Randle get the ball, 90% of the time, most of the players are just hovering around the perimeter. Ain't really, they just like you close out, they go ISO. And it's like, that's the play they call. Like, you know, the old ISO play where everybody just spread out and your player breaks down their, their opponent and try to get to the paint to make something happen. But if you're going to run that Golden State style offense, which I think that we should get away from because we don't have the the weapons to run that offense, we need to find another playbook, another scheme to, you know, to utilize according to what we have on the floor. But if you're going to run it, what I would do is, I would, like I said, I would go to the point where when these guys are driving, you have people cutting and make much more better of the play. So that when you're cutting, somebody's there to get the easier pass, to make an easier layup, a high percentage shot, or to look around and have a higher IQ when it's coming to like perimeter settings. This is not for Brandon Ingram, because Brandon Ingram IQ as in passing is much more higher than Randall. Not saying that Randall can't do it, because we've seen it from him last year. The biggest problem is Randall, like I said before, Randall is on the end of his contract. He's going to try to make himself look good because he wanted to be sure that a person out there is going to give him according to what is the max or the amount that a player of his caliber is supposed to get. So he's going to try to make his game look good. And I'm not knocking Randall. Do yours, big brother, because at the end of the day, they didn't give two cents about you. I'm just being honest. You know, I, like I said, I'm for the players. I, I like, I'm a Laker. I love the Lakers. But in the, the day, if you put it out there that you're going to be traded, you got to look out for self now. Because there's no guarantee that you might be here. Hold on while I pour this liquor real quick. But I'm just trying to tell you guys in the, the day. They had a good game against the um against um the Nets, but I'm not gonna be so high on it. Only for the simple fact, like I said before, you know, we just came off a blowout against Orlando, one of the worst teams in the NBA. And yet here we go where we play the Nets. And you know Brooke Lopez is gonna have a good game. Plus Brooke Lopez is kind of pissed off because he's been sitting down in the fourth quarter. I said in my video after he lost to Orlando that Brooke Lopez needed to be much more of a better veteran. He needed to call for the ball. He needed to demand Luke Walton to give him playing time. Don't be sitting there crying. You've been in the league over 10 years, big dude. You're doing what the young players are doing, crying and getting all emotional. You know, you know what you do is the little bit of time you get to play, you show him that you need to be on that floor. I'm Listen, I'm Luke Walton. This is the one thing I do agree with Luke Walton at. And I said it before when we got Brooke Lopez. I know that was the move in order to, to clear up space and get rid of Moscow contract. I understand all that. But you are seven feet tall. There's no goddamn going reason in God's green earth. Yes, I said God. But God's green earth that Josh Hart's got 14 rebounds through in the offensive board. And all you got is three rebounds, dude. You ain't got no offensive rebounds. 8 for 13, 19 points. Yeah, all that look good and dandy. You know, that's against your older team. So, yeah, you're going to come out playing good. Now, the thing is, at the end of the day, dude, you got to at least give us seven, eight rebounds. My gosh, I'm not. Listen, you played 28 minutes, only gave us three boards. And the game was still close. We still almost lost that game. Because we had to run half-court sets. But when we run half-court sets, you good on offense. But when it comes to, like, rebounding, defensive-wise, <sighs> not looking good for you. You had three blocks. That's good because you um you actually played pretty good because the one dude um not played pretty good. I mean, you had a good offensive game. The uh with the dude Allen, he had what five rebounds. He had a block, twenty points. Look, the funny thing is the dude blocked your shot and you came right back and blocked his. That was good on that sequence. We won this game. I, I like I said, I'm not knocking the point that we didn't want it. But Lopez, you can't sit there and whine because you didn't get to play. You only played like nine minutes uh last game. We were getting blown out by Orlando. There was no reason for that. And I'm not putting all the blame on you because it was the whole team as a whole and the coach. You know, we got out coach, out played. So I'm not putting all the blame on you. But at the end of the day, on games where you only giving us three or four boards, no, dude, we need more from you. You seven feet tall, man. You the tallest person on the day going floor. This guy's six nine. Julius Randle is right there. Look, Julius Randle is six nine. I'll rebound to some of the centers in the league, dude. Getting 12, 13 boards. Josh Hart, 14 boards. You only six five. That's no excuse, man. You got to be, listen, Brooke Lopez, I'm saying this to you, man. I hope that you watch my video, and I believe you guys do. The reason why I say that because when uh, Lake Show had tweeted something about Jordan Clarkson, he liked it. So I know y'all watch our videos. I'm going to say this to you, guy. You're right, 20, 29 years old. You're a free agent at the end of the season. Ain't too many teams going to be out there looking for you to give you a big a, a big contract. You're going to follow into the Roy Hibbert situation. What I'm saying to you is, Brooke, no matter if he's giving you 18 to 20 minutes, make the best of it so that way you can get a nice contract going forward, dude. KCP is trying to do it. Look, KCP you knows he's, uh, he's an expiring contract. He's gone. We only got him for one year. He's not going to be here the next year. So when he get on the floor, he's going to be 
I'm looking out for self. I'm not saying that you're going to do something to hurt the team because I think you really like being here with the Lakers. But if you want the Lakers to resign you, which I hope and pray they don't, I'm nothing against you. I just don't. I think that you just don't fit the offense that they're trying to they're trying to run. But if you want the Lakers to sign you, you got to be much more involved in the offense, man. Plus, play defense. That's the biggest thing. You got to play defense. That's why Larry Nance is getting much more minutes than you because Larry Nance coming with the energy. He played defense. You know what I mean? He might not be able to score like you, but he played defense. You know, we need a defense. Listen, the Lakers right now, if you go on any 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 media or any website, the biggest thing the Lakers talk about is PG-13 and a center. The Lakers need a center and a veteran player. That's simply put. We need somebody who goes to a rim protector who can protect the paint. You're not giving us that, big dog. You got to give us that. Other than that, when you play uh, the Nets, yeah, you going to play good. That's it. That's your ex-team. So you you going to play with a lot of emotions. That's common sense. You know? But, you know, at the end of the day, listen, I'm just so happy that Ingrid, uh, Tyler Ennis didn't play. Bringer played at the point. I'm happy because I've been saying this over and over again that Ingram need to play in the backcourt. Actually, he has a two, but right now because Lonzo Ball ain't, ain't, you know, he's out. I think he got one more game to miss. I think that he should be coming back. Ingram looks good at that. I keep, uh, Ingram looks so good playing at playing the guard spot. And I know a lot of people say, well, look, then with a, a blue pass him a couple of plays. Excuse me. I'm, you know, I'm drinking a little bit. Then with a blue pass him a couple plays. Crap, you know. You know, ain't really do too much. But then Widow was just killing. And Russell blew past him a couple plays. But here's the thing. Them guys couldn't even play them, though. They couldn't play him. That's the thing. Like, even though, you know, he might have, you know, a couple players might have blew past him and all this and that. But they can't play him on the, on the offensive side as well. So, yeah, you're going to give up a little bit on defense. But they can't play him on offense. He can post them guys up. And it makes much more sense because he's 6'9". He got a nice lift. When he plays small four, he struggles. And that's where, you know, you get fans... So say they say, well, you know, he's not good with Alonzo Ball. No, nah, man, ain't that. It's just that Luke Walton don't know how to utilize the players. Ingram, man, listen. I said this over and over again. I, I love to see Ingram at the two. Dude had 10 assists, and y'all know he's going to get two turnovers. Eight rebounds. Playing with a triple-double. Could have got the triple-double. He's an unselfish player, man. He's not going to be the Ingram that everybody expects him to be, the 20-point player. He's not that type of player, man. He plays within the system. Josh Hart plays within a system that's why you're not going to get that from these guys on a consistent basis they can they can give you 20 if they want to but they play team oriented ball man why do you think ingram came out last year and stated that you know guys need to move the ball more and that was basically pointed towards the andrew russell i hate to say it but it was just being honest you see guys need to move the ball more we need to get more involved because he looks to get other players involved man you know what I'm saying? But the, like I said, when you go to show you, the Lakers don't have shooters like that, man. And I'm not saying they – put it like this. I just think that you put your best players out there on the court. Your bench should never be better than your starting five. This game right here, our starting five actually played pretty good besides KCP. Had a bad game. But Luke Walton took him out 23 minutes. He only played. That's cool. Josh Hart played 35 minutes. I don't know why Josh Hart didn't play the last game against Orlando, which didn't make any damn sense. He only played, like, the last of the freaking, like, couple minutes. Wouldn't it make any sense to me? You know, why? I don't I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Josh Hart, to me, is our best defender. I told you he's better than KCP. That's why I said before, at the beginning of my, my beginning of the season, I said, I don't know why we're getting KCP when we got Josh Hart and we got Jordan Clarkson. And Josh Hart was picked up because of his defense. But, you know, that that's the way the cookie crumbles. And, and, and that's what we wind up with. But anyway, they had a good game. They beat um the, the Nets. The only thing about it, I say over and over again, is that I want consistency from these players, man. That's all I ask for, consistency from the coach and from the players, man. Don't give us this bull crap where, okay, you play Ingram, then next day, though, two games later, ball, hope, and pray he don't get hurt again. Two late games later, you see Tyler Ennis in there again. Like, come on, dude. Listen, the fans should not just be only ones to sit here and acknowledge what's bad on the court. You should know that, too, as a coach. You know he sucked, but you still keep playing and playing the guy. Two straight games, Tyler didn't have no assist. Brain goes, start the point. His one game starting the point. He does whatever the coaches tell him to do. Does whatever the coaches tell him to do. And I know I beat up on Brandon Ingram. And the reason why I beat up on Brandon Ingram, I'm going to tell you why I beat up on him. Because Magic Johnson has put him up on a higher pedestal than everybody else. When he said he can't be touched. And that's the reason why I get on Brandon Ingram. Because here's the thing. All these guys are playing for a contract. They're playing to either stay on the team or plan to get a better opportunity somewhere else. Brandon Ingram doesn't have to do that because why his job is is, is is protected. Because his job is protected, you don't get that out of Brandon Ingram. That's the thing. How you know he's protected? Because he's the only one playing 30-something minutes. Everybody else, once in a while, play 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it may be. Ingram is the only person, only player on that team that has not been negatively talked about. From the coaching staff to the front office. Everybody else comes to talk about, even with the fan base. The fan base, they talk about everybody else, but they never talk bad about Ingram. But when you talk about Ingram, 
you know, fans get upset. They get, you know, oh, look at that. They do this, they do that. Listen, I can sit right here and I can go on uh, um, Lakers film. On, um, Lakers film room and I can show you. It, it depending on how you break it down. But at the end of the day, you can look at Ingram. And I told you, the biggest problem I have with Ingram is this. He's uncontrollable when he goes to the paint. He turns the ball over a lot. He shows the ball. That's why he get blocked a lot. Sometimes he don't have no oof when he goes up to the rack. And he don't have confidence in the jump shot. These are just major flaws that he can work on. He's only 20 years old. He's going to get better. But I like the Ingram. That I like the unselfish Ingram. Why? Because that unselfish Ingram, he plays like Lonzo Ball. This dude can give you triple doubles every other night. I'm telling you, when he's 23, 24 years old, most high, most high willing if we still be around. But in 23, 24 years old, this guy's going to be a triple double. He's going to be dropping 18, 10 assists, 12 boards. He's going to be that type of player. But he needs, uh, to me, they need a better developing coach, man. Whoever that developing coach is, he sucks. He's not developing these players right. There's no reason for these guys to show a glimpse of what they can do when we know they can do much better. Jules ran the same thing. You know, at the end of the day, they need a better developing coach. Kuzma only played 20 minutes. I don't understand how Ingram can play the two, or the, I mean the point, right? He can play the small forward, the shooting guard, the point guard, sometimes power forward, once in the blue moon. How come Kuzma has not played small forward yet? You don't have to always put him at the power forward spot. You can play him at small forward spot. Kuzma has started to dwell on um, the window. Uh, he's falling off. You know, he have good games here and there, but then there's games where he just struggled. He didn't do too much in this game. He played 20 minutes, but he took nine shots. Um, Larry Nance, you know, played pretty good. Eight rebounds, seven points. Played only 16 minutes. In this 16 minutes, he had eight rebounds. Lopez played 28 minutes. <laughs> only three rebounds. Corey Brewer, 13 minutes. I have no problem with Corey Brewer. I like his energy. But at the same time, that same amount of time that he's getting at small forward, that could be at Kuzma. Kuzma be playing small forward. Me, personally, I'm not big with the second unit. Never was, never was with it last year. I think that Lou Walsh only have a, like a three or four man, well, a four man rotation with Kuzma, Larry Nash, Jordan Clarkson, and Caruso. That's me. That's um, that's how I look at it. Thomas Bryant will never get no playing time. He won once in the blue moon, but he get no playing time. Caruso, 11 minutes, didn't do too much. Um, struggle. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But Brandon Ingram came through in the clutch. Jordan Clarkson didn't have a good game. 3 for 14. He struggled. 3 for 6 behind a three point arc. He coming out shooting, but that's what Lou Walsh gave him the green light to shoot. He's he's filling the role of Lou Williams. But at the end of the day, we still won this game. DeAndre Russell. I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. And I'm going to let you guys go. All right. Then Whittle had a hell of a game. And Allen, man, he, man, that, that that little young dude, nice, man. I like him, man. I like him. He's pretty good. Like I said, the Nets got an up-and-coming team, man. Um, DeAndre Russell, if you watch this video, dude, if I was you, once my contract is up in a couple years, whatever, I get the hell out of there. I don't think you're going to be starting because um, them guys look pretty good, man. That's if Crab resigned after this contract is up. But then Whittle look pretty good, man. I, I I'm just being honest with you. The guy had 9 assists, 23 points, 9 for 19. He did take a lot of shots, but he's fast. He's quick and he gets to the basket. I like Den Whittle. I ain't going to lie to you. Den Whitty, whatever his name is, Den Whitty, he's pretty good. Okafor, same thing, man. You got to get out of there, too. You're not going to play time there, man. But anyway, uh, I'm going to say this about DeAndre Russell. And I know y'all know I'm not a big DeAndre Russell fan, but I will, will point this out. If y'all notice, when he was under Lou Walton, all he was known for was taking jump shots and taking three-pointers. And everybody in the fan base kept saying, go to the basket, go to the basket, go to the basket. I think, if I'm not mistaken, and I watched mostly all them games, last year, I believe DeAndre Russell only went to the basket probably like three times out of a whole season. If I'm not mistaken, about three times. In this game alone, this dude went 7 for 18, didn't have a bad, didn't have a good game at all. All right, 1 for 5 behind a 3 point because you know why? He wanted to make sure the same way Brooke Lopez was. Against, you know, the Nets. That's how he wanted to be against the Lakers. He wanted to show that, you know, you lost a valuable player. He didn't have a good game. Coming off the bench, only played 24 minutes. But I want to call, I want to point this one this one thing out to y'all. If y'all notice, this dude went to the basket four times. Out of four times, he made three layups. He broke out defense down. Even broke past um, um, Brandon Ingram. He broke out defense down. He went to the basket three times. Now, remember I said, when he was with us, he didn't go to the basket. This letting you know. This is the this is the system that Lou Walton runs. Lou Walton system is based on shooting threes. Simple put. That's why I tell y'all how did Brooke Lopez go from averaging 18 points or something last year, making I think 100 something threes last year, to basically ain't doing nothing this year. I mean, go look at his stats. I told y'all. I mean, after the day, you got to question the coach. Now, do I say get rid of the coach? No, you got to question him because everybody's in question. We can't just sit there and keep blaming the players and never saying nothing to the coach. But they still won. 
And I hope that, you know, we just need consistency. That's all we ask, consistency. You have talent. Stop making your talent like it ain't about nothing. That's what I'm trying to say at the end of the day. We have talent. Anyway, it's your man, Urban Lover. Like, share, subscribe. Get in the comment section. Tell me what you think. You guys have a blessed one. Take care and be safe out there.